Hello Meeples, my name is Trent, welcome to Tabletop Unboxing, and for this episode I'll be reviewing one of the newer games that recently come out over the last couple of weeks, which is Lord of the Rings Journeys Through Middle-Earth, made by board game veterans Fantasy Flight Games, which has given us such quality titles over the recent years, such as Oh my god, why is everything trying to kill me, 3rd edition, as well as I probably shouldn't go in there, but I'm going to do it anyway, 2nd edition. So what exactly is Journeys Through Middle-Earth? Journeys Through Middle-Earth is a 1-5 to five player game in which you play as some of the most iconic characters inside the Lord of the Rings franchises, in the books and in the movies. So there's Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, along with fan favorites such as Bilbo Baggins, and two brand newcomers that's going to be original to the storyline. And I say storyline, it's actually quite interesting. So it's a campaign game, so it's not built for just one scenario, one-offs and whatnot, so you have to have a constant group in order to actually progress through the storyline. Although you can play with extra people and take them out as it goes along, the app in this case does a very good job of keeping all the enemies, spawning the enemies, giving you a sense of suspense, doing the storytelling, and making the world. I think it has a fine balance between all the bookkeeping that you actually need inside the app, while making it feel as if the board itself is still important and relevant, especially when it comes to the checks. So the game revolves around three main concepts. The first is attack, long range, short range, or in the same space as you, the combat will result, and then they fight back. The second is movement. Movement is basically you move here, you move there, and as you move you get to explore, which is kind of another action, but not really. The third action is interact, which is basically you look at the environment, you talk to people, you find results, you try to do tests. Testing is a pretty big thing inside this game, so how it works is that you're going to be given something on the app. The app is going to tell you which symbol to test against. So let's say you have four wit, you take the first four cards from your player made deck and seeing how many success symbols there are. You can change fate tokens into successes by spending fate points. There's also like a dead card that you have, which is a weakness card. And every deck is made of three different things. First off is your basic cards. There's one to six cards and everyone's going to have them. So there's no real variant between it, but there are different artworks, which just adds a bit of flavor. A second one is you are going to get your character cards. So your character cards is like, basically, what's unique to that character? Gimli's going to go in and start slashing things. Legolas can shoot things from two distances away instead of just the one. Aragon is a captain, so he can, like, batter together everyone. And the third one, which is, you can change it anytime you want. This is the last one that's very variable. So it's kind of your class. So you can make Legolas a thief or a pathfinder if you want to. He's really good as a hunter. And Aragon might be more of a captain, but depending on your group, you might think, Oh, you know what? I want Aragon to be a musician. Changes an uh, item out from a uh, sword into a loot or whatever the equivalent is in this game. So that's basically all of the unique elements of this game. It has a little bit of the Mansion of Madness exploration. It has the good parts of the interaction and then finding out what's going on. It has the fantastic part of the Arkham Horror LCG where you just like test your skills, you get stronger. You also progress your character and it gets stronger as well. And you get stronger cards. You have to have to think... You have to think what card I'm going to choose. So if I choose this particular card, it's going to take one success symbol out of my deck, but I can have it as a strong action that I can use on the next turn to kill someone. So what are the really good parts about this game? The first thing is the app. The app is great. I think it takes all the bookkeeping, it spawns enemies in like an okay fashion, it progresses the storyline, it just keeps this clutter off of the table. It has the best parts of Manchester Madness and the excellent part of the deck building inside the LCG of Arkham Horror. It's just... You get stronger as the game goes on, you progress, you feel a real sense of urgency because there's constant danger. One thing I won't really, one thing I don't really enjoy about it is that it keeps you in a sense of, sometimes it feels as if you're doing a lot in the game. So you're killing all these orcs, then you're killing all these side quests, and all of a sudden, uh, like, take a look. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. Oh, all right, okay, the farmer, I'm going to shave his chickens. I mean, not shave his chickens, I'm going to save his chickens. And now... Oh, I just killed two orcs and oh my god, the treach has increased by 13. Why the hell did it just increase? Which is kind of a bummer, because you kind of feel as if, you know, you're clearing out the area, the dangers are going lower, you know, there shouldn't be as much of a treach increasing per turn. But at the same time, I kind of do get it, because as time goes on, the sun sets and then more enemies appear. Which, I don't know. That's a, just, just the one thing about the app that I don't really enjoy. The other thing I really enjoy about this game is that you actually feel like you're in Middle-earth. You're inside a fellowship, you're trying to hunt down some bandits, you're trying to find a larger narrative to this entire game, and you get stronger as you go along. It feels as if you're actually inside a storyline, or inside one of the movies or a side movie. The only thing, the only thing about it is that the tiles feel a little bit bland. 
And now we're going to go on and tell you about the things I didn't like about the game. One thing in particular is that there's a limited set of minis. There's not an actual lot of variety when it comes to enemies. I do hope as this function goes on, there will be more variety. You feel like you're actually killing more and more troops. None of them have really backstory to them. None of them are really impressive to say the least. They're generic, they're orcs, they're goblins, they're ruffians, things like that, you know? And there's also like the slight ogre, which I have to say, yeah, my mini got a little bit warped on the way here. I don't know what happened to it, but hopefully they'll fix that for your print run. Another thing that I feel that it could have included inside the base game is that there could have been more characters. I mean, there's a whole bunch of characters inside the lore of Lord of the Rings. And for some reason, we have three members of the Fellowship, Bilbo Baggins, and two original characters. Why do we need two original characters? And I have to say, Gandalf. Where is Gandalf? I know where he is. He's never late, nor is he early, but he's gonna be behind a giant paywall that you're just gonna have to buy the expansion of just to play as the White Wizard, or the Grey Wizard, depending on what state we get him in. But I digress. And so that's my thoughts on Lord of the Rings Journeys from Middle Earth. It's a fantastic game. However, it's relatively new. There's not a lot of content for it. The ones at the base set feels a little bit bare. There is a new expansion going on where you can trade in some of the figures for actual scope minis, which sounds to be good. I'm not actually sure if they're gonna keep supporting it. I feel as if there are some early reviews that say it's not particularly enjoyable. I found it if you have a group that does an AP, that knows what they're doing, and they're a team player, you know, it's a great game. And thank you so much, everyone, for watching. If you enjoy my content, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Helps the channel grow. Tells me that you guys want more. And uh, yeah, if you have any more ideas for board games to do review, I do have a couple on my list, but show me whichever ones that you guys want to see in particular, and uh, hopefully I can get to that. Until next time, guys. Have a nice day.